All right. In the meantime, the Democratic-led House Judiciary Committee is holding a hearing on Monday on a potential obstruction of justice. Some are calling it the first of an impeachment trial without calling it outright an impeachment trial. I'm not so savvy on these things. I, I'm not a lawyer. But this next one is, and a darn good one, the former Whitewater Independent Counsel, Ken Starr. Ken, always good to have you. Hey, thank you, Neil. All right. So help me with this. It, it has all the makings right. and trappings of being an impeachment trial without it being an impeachment trial. Among their leadoff uh, guests and witnesses, John Dean, of course, of, of, of you know, Watergate fame. There's a reason for that, isn't there? Right. It's a show trial of trying to stir up interest. Uh, what we've seen, Neil, is uh, the Speaker of the House, from all the reports I've seen, is saying, no way. We just don't want to go down impeachment row. It's a cul-de-sac or, you know, there's a, a precipice. We're going to be rolling down a very dangerous place. Uh, but I think what she has been doing, including using some very unkind language and comments that I think are unbecoming to the Speaker of the House of Representatives is, well, let's just wait and President Trump will go to jail in the fullness of time. Really a very naughty comment. Uh, but I think that what she is trying to do is to keep the super hawks, the impeachment super hawks in her party uh, at bay, keep them leashed. But this is a way getting a John Dean, which is not a very serious thing to do, it's theater, is a way of, I think, feeding the super hawks a little bit of food. You know, uh, John Dean was among those famous courts for saying that uh, and commenting in his own conversations with Richard Nixon at the time, shared with Sam Irvin and the Senate Intelligence Committee at the time that there was a cancer around the Nixon presidency. Um, and he has since referred in appearances on another network that the same applies here. Uh, what do you make of that? Wrong, wrong, wrong. Uh, I, I listen to John Dean and I simply say how the mighty are fallen. Right. Now, he was, in fact, involved in a conspiracy. What we now know from the Mueller report, the 446 pages, is that there was no conspiracy at all. And I think John Dean, if he loves his country, I hope he does, would say, thank goodness we had a president who did not commit crimes of conspiracy or anyone's around him colluding with the Russians. We moved, Neil, as you know, then to the debate about the so-called obstructive acts. And John Dean will say whatever he wants to say about that. I would just say this. Bob Mueller himself has made it very clear that he did not conclude that the President of the United States committed obstruction of justice. Right? There's been a lot of talk around it. But he has said, I didn't exonerate him. But he also did not conclude that the president committed a crime. My own review of the report says the president did not commit a crime. Could he have said that if he wanted to? He was making an argument. I, I, again, I, I didn't understand again that he, there were restrictions on how far he could go. And I was thinking, with the, you know, the two and a half years of this investigation, whatever it was, <laughs> that, that recommendation one way or the other w would be made. And then it ended up being non-committal on a couple of things. So what could he have said or done? Was, did he have license to say, all right, this is an impeachable offense, or et cetera? He had the authority, indeed he had the direction, to determine whether the President of the United States committed a crime. And why didn't he, he do that? He could then say... You, you were very unequivocal in, in your investigation of, of Bill Clinton. Why wasn't he? Right. Well, first of all, our evidence was overwhelming that Bill Clinton committed perjury and all those other crimes. Uh, and it's essentially undisputed, stipulated virtually, that Bill Clinton committed federal crimes. There not only has been no stipulation, there's no finding. Now, you ask, why didn't he? That's why Bob Mueller needs to testify. That's why if he doesn't testify, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. We need an inspector general's investigation. That's what he was charged with doing, and he did not do his job. So um, we really can't advance the ball very much here. Beyond the politics of if you hate Donald Trump, you probably still hate him and are suspicious about him. If you love Donald Trump, probably you know, still love him and are not suspicious of him. So what happens? Well, what, what should happen is people should step back and say, and I think the American people have, and said, 
let us give thanks that there was no collusion, that there was no conspiracy with the Russians. And in fact, let me make a very brief comment on this. This is so important that Bob Mueller found through his elaborate investigation that the Russians were caught flat-footed during the transition because they didn't know anyone in the campaign. They did not know Donald Trump. So you'd say, well, wait, what about the Moscow Hotel, Michael Cohen and all that? Read the report. There were no connections with, the, with Trump Tower on the part of the Kremlin. That should be reaffirming to the American people and all persons of goodwill that the Trump campaign was completely innocent. There were efforts by the Russians, but not reciprocated by the Trump campaign and certainly not implicating the president himself. We well, the, what the Democrats are doing, obviously, is to, to, to move past that and say, all right, well, the president at key moments was trying to block stuff, obstruct stuff. Where, how far do you think that's going to go? I, it, it just has to be, it doesn't work. And the reason it doesn't work is the investigation, be, really quickly, sure. was allowed to go forward without obstruction. Did the president like the investigation? No. Did he wish it ill? Yes. But did he stop the investigation? No, he did not. All right, Ken Starr, it's always a pleasure on a Saturday. Thank you for coming in. Thank you.